and welcome to the Dad's Television Network. And we're back. We've been away from the camera and the airwaves for oh, about three months, but nonetheless, we've been attending to business. What have we been doing? Well, we've been attending meetings, dealing with the legislature, and we've got some tape. And we've got guests. So stay tuned for the next hour with the Dad's Television Network while we present some of this material to you. First in line, what I want to do is show you some tape that was taken in Salem that had to do with the Support Enforcement Division, SED. What they're doing is proposing legislation that, that will have an impact on many of you as, as time goes by. All right. Uh, some of these bills you'll be interested in. For instance, I made a note here. Uh, let's see. The, one of the bills that is coming up, presented by the Support Enforcement Division. Uh, let's see. No, it wasn't presented by the Support Enforcement Division. It's a bill that was presented that has an impact on support, where that old issue that people who are, or, or families who have children approaching the age of 18, are required to pay child support beyond the age of 18 if the kid is attending school. Well, there has been a bill introduced in Salem. The bill gives the judge the authority or the power to make that decision rather than it being automatic and written into law. Now, a lot of you have asked for that, so apparently they've gotten the word. I can't tell you the status of the bill at this time, but I know that there is a bill there. Again, that issue where you pay child support to age 18 and beyond age 18 if attending school. A lot of the guys have said, and many of their wives have said, why should we have to pay child support beyond the age of 18? It doesn't make sense. An intact family doesn't have to guarantee that the child has tuition or money to go to school. So why does a divorced father have to guarantee those issues? And if we're ready now, perhaps we can show you a little tape on what SED, Support Enforcement Division, uh, was talking about. Now, we took our cameras right there to a meeting, and this is what we want to do from time to time. Roll tape. 175, I think, is probably uh, a dead bill. Senate 175 got one hearing uh, <coughs> six weeks ago or so. Senate Bill, 170, Senate bill 75 would have changed the uh, 107108, the child attending school section. As you know, in Oregon, Oregon is one of the several states, uh, less than 10 states, which provide for child support beyond the age of 18 if a child, child is attending school. Senate 75 would have amended that provision uh, by giving the court more discretion on whether or not to order that. Okay, for those of you uh, who may not be aware, that was John Ellis. John Ellis is the assistant administrator to support enforcement, and uh, his comments were, and that reminded me, he thought it was a dead bill. I don't know. You may want to check it out for yourself. Now, also, at that same meeting, there was a discussion about uh, those people who are doubly impacted with child support orders doubly impacted because when the support order is originally written and before it gets to the Office of Support Enforcement, there is a requirement that support be made. All right, so where does it go? Sometimes the mother's attorney says, make the support payment directly to the mother. Well, until it gets registered, there's a problem because support enforcement may go back from day one and ask for the same money all over again. And that has a double hit against the obligor, usually the father. Well, let me go through that scenario just once again so we know what we're talking about. Suppose January 1, uh, the divorce is complete and the attorney for the mother says, make the support payment now. Now, in the meantime, for the month of January, the support payment has been made directly to the mother, and the paperwork is working its way down 
to the Support Enforcement Office and it's working its way into the computer system. Well, as it works its way into the computer system, it suddenly becomes registered, and let's say it takes another month or two for that, and once it becomes registered, they show no money having been paid. No money has been paid on the computer system itself. However, money was paid directly to the obligee or the mother. So in many instances, as fathers are told to do these things, and indeed they follow through doing these things, the system is designed with a hole in it because the people at support enforcement look at their computer payoff or payout and come back and ask for the same money again. So someone has saw fit to draw up a bill and they were talking about it. Roll tape. Senate Bill 213 uh, does the following stuff. It gives it sets up a process for getting credit for payments not made to DHR. You know, for years, the statute has said if you're supposed to pay DHR and you don't pay DHR, you don't get credit. And we all know and you know that there are sometimes good reasons why a person who has paid the child support directly to the custodial parent and not pay DHR. There's sometimes good reasons why that person should be able to get credit for doing that. Most frequently it's when we get a new order and the court doesn't get it to us for two months. Right. And he knows he's supposed to be making payments. We don't have a case, so if he sends it to us, it's not going to get processed. So, and frequently his attorney tells him, go ahead pay and pay her directly. And what happens then is when we get the case, we set it up retroactive to when it said to begin to make payments because they were all supposed to come from DHR. Obviously, the, maybe the first two months worth of payments <coughs> have been made directly. And what we find ourselves is with the law, even though dad has the canceled checks, the elder board has the canceled checks, we can't give them credit under the law. We have to ask a custodial parent to do a satisfaction. It frequently occurs, and we just had one, a big mess on one yesterday, that the custodial parent refuses to do that. They just aren't going to sign the satisfaction. You run across that a lot. To this point, we have had no choice but then to tell people that they've got to go to court, get an attorney, and go to court and get the judge to say, you've got credit. This would change the law that says, if we get acceptable proof, from the non-custodial parent who's making the payments, then we're going to be able to credit it if the custodial parent. And if we refuse to give credit, even though the person offers us what they think is just good information or good evidence, the person can ask for an administrative hearing. Okay. So they are talking about some of the issues that are important to you and to me and to all the rest of the guys that are out there paying child support and to some of the guys that aren't paying child support. So the issues are out there. We want all of you to participate. This is just a mere sample. It would be very nice if everything that I heard would get down to Salem or to Olympia so that they can hear it. We need your voices. Okay, now I think we're going to have a little opportunity for some phone calls, so if we've got the phone lines ready, the, uh, the control room may want to flash that number on the screen. And inside the studio here, we have some people that are sitting behind the scenes, off camera, that have some war stories of their own to tell. The system is not right. You know it, I know it, and the people in Salem and Olympia know it. And the only way we're going to get it corrected or improved is to let them know what it is. We've got even the president beating up on fathers. Uh, the bill went through the House here in Oregon to withhold driver's license. Now that's on the House side. It has not gone through the Senate. For those of you who want copies of that bill, I believe the uh, House bill number on that in Oregon is 2357. Those of you who are complaining, I'd like for you to know that there's a bill that the guys want through and you want to request a hearing on it. I'd like for you to take a look and check out House Bill 3291. 3291 puts her in jail right off the bat, no ifs, ands, or buts, 
asked for a copy of House Bill 3291. Uh, what, what she goes to jail for is denial of visitation. It's a contempt issue. It's a very simple um, minded or simply read bill. It's not, uh, it's not confusing at all. It just says you deny visitation, you go to jail. It says it in one paragraph or so, maybe two or three sentences. Now, as I've said, we've got people in this studio here that have war stories of, the, of their own. And so what I thought I would do is to invite some of them to share their stories with us here on camera. And if you can relate and you're out there and you can see that phone number, call in. It should be on the screen. If you can't see the phone number, then you're w watching a, a tape. And since we don't know when this show will air and where it will air, we have chosen to show the number when we're live and as a tape, you can't see it, all right? But that doesn't mean that these stories, the war stories that you hear, are any less important. So I want to welcome to the Dad's Television Network, your name? Dwight Foster. Dwight, welcome to the program. What's your story? Well, I, I'm here today to raise a question regarding the wage assignment program that is currently in effect, and it affected me to the extent that uh, I, I've been working for 22 years at the same place, and uh, I've been paying support, or I was paying support for 14 years, and uh, I had no problem until we ran into some issues dealing with the wage assignment program. The wage assignment program dealt with the fact that uh, they came in and they withheld wages of mine to give to my ex-wife for support. And through the course of this wage withholding, I managed to um, overpay her. And yesterday I went down to the support enforcement place that is working with me on the case. And I was told by them straight out that the money that I overpaid is an issue that I'll have to deal with. And I have here letters from my attorney that request that the amount be changed and that we get a correction on it. Instead, I overpaid over $600, and I'd like to receive that money back. Uh, hold on, Dwight. Hold on. Now, how did you wind up overpaying? Say that again, please. Well, what had happened was I had gone to court a year ago, a year and four, a year and four months ago, uh, when I had the wage assignment where it should have been dropped to a lesser amount, it was never dropped. What happened down in Salem was when I'd gone to court and a court order was issued stating that the amount that I was paying be reduced, the uh, Salem continued to take the same amount of money out. Okay, so an order was issued for a reduction or modification. Correct. But the computer didn't get the word. Right. And so since you had no control over right. the wage withholding out of your paycheck, right. then there was nothing that you or your employer could do because the order didn't change that's anything. That's correct. So you, you were had then, even though you went through the process, uh, what do they blame that on? Delay of the mail or what? What's uh, Several notices here, they had no actual reply other than we will look into it. <laughs> and, and it was about eight months ago that I asked for an audit on my account and up until recently, I never received anything. And all of a sudden, I received a notice in the mail stating that, oh, yes, we see that you've overpaid. You will be entitled to get a check back on it any day now. Well, I went back down there, like I was saying yesterday, to this uh, support enforcement downtown. And when I told them that, yes, OK, I'll, you know, I, I'd appreciate that, they said there had been an error in this, that, that they are not responsible for that. It is up to me to seek and get the money back that they took out of my wages gave gotcha. to her and now I have to go through another attorney and I have to do it on well, my own. Uh, now Dwight, uh, didn't you also ask for a printout or a statement of your account? Did it show up that there was on the positive side that the, the figure was plus for you? Right, right. Uh, that, how much was that figure? Well, uh, it was over 400 and some dollars. There was a dis dispute over 200 of it. I was willing to say, after all the hassle, I, I don't care about the All right, so it showed up on the computer now 